Greetings. This episode covers Indiana's artillery regiments, 14th through the 25th. The 14th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, recruiting began for this battery took place in Wabash, Huntington, Miami, Fayette counties. It organized at Indianapolis. The battery moved to Pittsburgh Landing, Tennessee, after mustering in on March the 24th, 1862, under the command of Captain Meredith H. Kidd. It was attached to the Army of the Tennessee. During its service, it was attached to the 13th and 16th Army Corps. The 14th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, saw duty mainly in Tennessee and Mississippi. Major actions included action at Lexington, Tennessee, December the 18th, 1862, where Confederates captured a, detach a detachment of the battery. The Meridian Campaign, February the 3rd through March the 2nd, 1864, the Battle of Bryce's Crossroads, June the 10th, 1864, campaign against Mobile, Alabama, and its defenses, March 17th through April the 12th, 1865. The battery mustered out of action on out of <clears throat> service on September the 1st, 1865. 14th Indiana Battery Light, Light Artillery suffered 28 casualties, four killed in action, one officer, and 23 enlisted men died of disease. The 15th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, served as a guard detail for Confederate prisoners in Indianapolis until it organized and mustered into service on July the 5th, 1862, under the command of John C.H. Von Schein. The unit was attached to the Army of Virginia. The battery operated mainly in Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia, mostly with the 23rd Army Corps. Major actions included the defense of Harper's Ferry from September the 13th through the 15th, 1862. The unit received parole in September 1862 and was stationed briefly in Chicago, Indianapolis, and Louisville. It participated in the pursuit of Confederate John Morgan while stationed in Louisville during his July 1863 raid across Indiana and Ohio. It also participated in Burnside's campaign in East Tennessee from August the 16th through October the 17th, 1863, the Knoxville campaign from November the 4th until December the 23rd, 1863. It had it fought at battles around Pumpkin Vine Creek and battles of Dallas, New Hope Church, and Altoona Hills May the 25th through June the 5th, 1863. It participated in the Siege of Atlanta from July the 22nd until August the 25th, 1865. It fought at the Battle of Nashville on December the 15th and 16th, and it, it, uh, part it participated in the pursuit of Hood to the Tennessee River from December the 17th through the 28th, 1864. It also uh, participated in the Campaign of the Carolinas from March the 1st until April the 26th, 1865. The battery mustered out of service on June the 30th, 1865. It suffered 14 casualties, one killed in action, 12 enlisted men, and one officer by disease. The 16th Independent Battery Indy Light, Indiana Light Artillery uh, organized at Lafayette and mustered in, in, mustered in in Indianapolis on March the 24th, 1862, under the command of Colonel of Captain Charles A. Naylor. After traveling into Washington, D.C., the battery was part of the Defenses of Washington Military District of Washington, D.C. It remained in that capacity until June the 26th, 1862, when it joined Nathaniel Prentice Banks' Shenandoah Campaign in Virginia. Later actions included Pope's Campaign in Northern Virginia from July to September 1862, Battle of Cedar Mountain on August the 9th, 1862, Battle of Antietam, on September the 16th and 17th, 1862. After that, it received orders to return to the defense of Washington, D.C. The 16th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, mustered out of service on July the 5th, 1865. The battery suffered 11 casualties, all by disease. The 17th Independent Battery, Light Artillery, organized in Indianapolis and mustered into service in 1862 with Captain Milton L. Minor in command. Most of the recruits were from, were from Indianapolis, however, men from Rochester, Dublin, Cambridge City, Sandy Hook, Maryland, and other Indiana towns also enlisted. Uh, Sandy Hook, Maryland obviously is not in uh, Indiana, but the rest of them were. Anyway, after traveling to Baltimore, Maryland, the battery joined the 8th Army Corps Middle Department to participate with the defense of the city. During the course of the war, most of its action took place in Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. 
Major actors included the battery performed mostly garrison duty in Bar Baltimore and Harper's Ferry, Virginia. It took part in the evacuation of Harper's Ferry on July the 1st, 1863, and reoccupied the city on July the 7th, 1863. It joined General Philip Henry Sheridan's Shenandoah Valley campaign from August the 7th through November the 28th, 1864, and fought at the Battle of Cedar Creek on October the 19th, 1864. The battery returned to garrison duty at Frederick City, Maryland until mustering out on July the 8th, 1865. The uh, regiment suffered 16 casualties, four killed in action, two officers and 10 enlisted men died of disease. The 18th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery, which is also called Lilly's uh, Regiment, the men that served in this battery came mostly from central portion of the state. Towns listed as residences include Crawfordsville, Greencastle, Sanford, and Pendleton. The 18th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, organized in Indianapolis and mustered into service on August the 20th, 1862, with Captain Eli Lilly in command. The battery received orders to proceed to Louisville, Kentucky, after which it joined the 12th Division, Army of the Ohio. During the course of the war, it fought mainly in Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. In November 1862, the battery transferred to the Army of the Cumberland, with whom it would reserve the remainder of the year. Uh, the major actions included pursuit of Confederate General John T. Morgan in Kentucky between December the 22nd, 1862 through January the 2nd, 1863. It uh, fought at the Chickamauga Campaign August the 16th through September the 22nd, 1863. It followed uh, Sherman on his campaign it fought, it fought with General Sherman at the Atlanta campaign on May the 1st through September the 8th, 1864, and the, uh, participated in the Siege of Atlanta from July the 22nd through August the 25th, 1864. It uh, helped with the capture of Macon, Georgia on April the 20th, 1865. The, uh, the battery returned to Indianapolis to muster out on June the 23rd, 1865. It suffered 43 casualties, 11 listed men, and one officer killed in action, and 31 to disease. The 19th Independent Battery Indiana and Allied Artillery. Uh, most of these men came from Cambridge City, Columbia City, Knightstown, and Columbus, Indiana. The Independent Battery Light Organized, the Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery organized in Indianapolis and mustered into service on August the 5th, 1862, with Captain Samuel J. Harris in command. The unit received orders to proceed to Louisville, Kentucky, and join the 34th Brigade, 10th Division, Army of the Ohio. It would later be attached to the Army of the Cumberland and the 14th Army Corps. The battery saw extensive duty in Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. It fought at the uh, Battle of Perryville, Kentucky on October the 8th, 1862. It participated in the pursuit of, John, of Confederate General John T. Morgan in Kentucky from December the 22nd until January the 2nd, 1863. It fought at the Battle of Chickamauga, Georgia uh, in September of 1863, participated in the Siege of Chattanooga in September through November of 1863, it uh, participated in the Chattanooga Rheingold Campaign, November the 23rd through the 27th, 1863. It fought at the Battles of Orchard Knob, November the 23rd and 24th, 1863. It uh, <clears throat> helped storm Missionary Ridge on November the uh, 25th, 1863. Participated in the Siege of Atlanta, July 22nd through August 25th, 1864. It uh, helped with operations against General Hood in North Georgia and North Alabama from September the 29th through November the 3rd, 1864. Participated in the Siege of Atlanta in December of 1864. And it also fought in the Campaign of the Carolinas from January through April, 1865. And it fought at the Battle of Fayetteville on March the 11th, 1865, Taylor's Hole Creek, from March 16th, 1865, Battle of Bentonville, March the 19th and 21st, 1865, Surrender of Johnson and his army on April the 26th, 1865, and it participated in the Grand View Review in Washington, D.C. on May the 24th, 1865. The 19th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery mustered out of service on June the 10th, 1865. It suffered 32 casualties, 
10 enlisted men and one officer killed in action, 21 died of disease. 20th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery, the majority that enlisted in this unit came from Indianapolis. However, some were from Bloomington, Greencastle, and Valparaiso. The 20th Independent Battery Light Artillery mustered in on September the 19th, 1862, after organizing at Indianapolis, Indiana. After mustering in, the battery deployed to Henderson, Kentucky. During the course of the war, it was to be attached to, at various times, the Department of the Ohio, Department of the Cumberland, and Army of the Cumberland. The battery served most of the war in Kentucky, Alabama, and Georgia. Major actions included guard duty in Kentucky until 1863, garrison duty in Alabama, Battle of Jonesboro on August the 31st through September the 1st, 1864, pursuit of Hood into Alabama October the 1st through the 26th, 1864, Battles of Nashville December the 15th and 16th, 1864. The battery mustered out on June 28, 1865, after suffering 31 casualties, 7 killed in action, and 24 by disease. 21st Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, included men from Logansport, South Bend, LaPorte, Middlebury, and Benson, Michigan. Enlisted, They enlisted in this unit. After organizing and mustering in at Indianapolis, Indiana on September the 9th, 1862, the battery deployed to Covington, Kentucky under the command of Captain William W. Andrew. The battery was attached to, at various times, the Army of the Kentucky, the Army of Cumberland, and Garrison Artillery. The 21st Independent Battery spent most of the war fighting in Kentucky and Tennessee. Major actions included guard duty in Kentucky and Tennessee until August 1863, the Chickamauga Campaign, August and September of 1863, the Battles of Chattanooga in November of 1863, the Battle of Nashville in December of 1863. It served garrison duty until mustering out on June the 26th, 1865, the 21st Independent Battery Light Artillery suffered 28 casualties, 4 killed in action, 24 to disease. 22nd Independent Indiana Light Artillery was commanded by Be Captain Benjamin F. Denning. It organized in Indianapolis and mustered into service on December the 15th, 1862, 18, yeah, 1862 for a three-year term. The men in this unit hailed from Rushville, Crawfordsville, Manila, Lafayette, and Slabdown. After deploying to Louisville, Kentucky, the battery was attached to, at various times throughout the war, the Army of Kentucky, the Army of the Ohio, 23rd Army Corps, and the 10th Army Corps. The 22nd Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery served mainly in Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, and the Carolinas. Major actions included the Siege of Atlanta from July through August 1864, the Nashville Campaign in November and December 1864, Pursuit of Hood to the Tennessee River December th in December 1864, the Campaign of the Carolinas March through April of 1865, the Battle of Wise Forks on March the 8th through the 10th 1865, and it took part in the surrender of Johnson and his army in 1865. The 22nd Independent Battery Light artillery returned to Indianapolis and mustered out of service on July the 7th, 1865. The battery suffered 13 casualties, one officer and enlisted man killed in action, 11 enlisted men to disease. The 23rd Indiana Light Artillery organized in Indianapolis with mate recruits mainly from Allen, Huntington, Kosciuszko, Whitley, Tippecanoe, and Elkhart counties. Captain James, James H. Myers commanded the battery. The battery mustered into service on November the 8th, 1862, and deployed to Louisville, Kentucky. Initially with the Army of the Ohio, the battery spent most of the war attached to the 23rd Army Corps and 10th Army Corps. The battery served mainly in Tennessee, Alabama, and the Carolinas. Major actions included the Siege of Atlanta, July the 22nd through August the 25th, 1865, the Nashville Campaign in November and December 1864, Battle of Nashville, on December 15th and 16th, 1864, and the Campaign of the Carolinas from March through April of 1865. The unit returned to Indianapolis and mustered out of service on July the 7th, 1865, after suffering 19 casualties, two killed in action, and 17 men to disease. The 24th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, organized from recruits mainly from Carroll, Putnam, and Lake Counties. In northwestern and central Indiana, 
the 24th Independent Battery organized in Indianapolis and mustered into duty on November the 29th, 1862, with Captain Joseph A. Sims in command. The battery deployed to Louisville, Kentucky, attached to the dis district Greetings. of Western this Kentucky. This episode covers Department Indiana's Ohio artillery regiments during most of its service of the 25th. The, the 14th Army Independent Corps Battery, Corps mostly in Kentucky, Kentucky, artillery and Georgia. Recruiting began to this battery took place in Wabash, Camp Huntington, East Miami, Fayette County. August 16th, organized in Indianapolis, the battery moved to Pittsburgh, landing in Tennessee after mustering in on March 24th, 1862, under the command of Captain Meredith H. Marston Charleston, attached to the Army of the Tennessee. During its service, it was attached to the 13th and 16th Army Corps. 14th Independent Battery, the 8th Light Artillery, saw duty mainly in most of the batteries at Sunshine Church. Major July actions included action at Lexington, Tennessee, December the 18th, uh, the rest of the year went on to fight. Four Confederates captured in Nashville, December the 15th, a detachment of the battery. The Meridian Campaign, February 3rd, Indianapolis, and Mustard, 1864. Out of service on August the 3rd, 1864. The Battle of Bryce's Crossroads, June the 10th, 31 casualties. Campaign against Mobile. The 25th Independent Battery, Light Artillery. This was the last one recruited in Indiana. The battery organized at Indianapolis and mustered into service on October the 4th, 1864, with Captain Frederick C. Sturm in command. The battery deployed to Nashville, Tennessee, and became part of the unattached artillery department of the Cumberland. Major actions include the Battle of Nashville, Tennessee, December the 15th and 16th, 1864, garrison duty at Decatur, Georgia for the remainder of the war. Returned to Indianapolis and mustered out of service on July 29th, July 20th, 1865, after seven, suffering seven casualties, all to disease. The next episode begins relating the cavalry units from Indiana that fought in the war. Find out more about Indiana's role in the Civil War by purchasing my book. You will find it on the website www.mossyfeetbook.com on the Indiana Short History Series category. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. You may choose to purchase the book in ebook or softbound versions. An audiobook version is also available on Google Play. At the conclusion of this podcast series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, as well as many other audiobook sellers. You can listen to this podcast on many platforms, including Apple, Tune in, Spotify, Amazon Music, and many others. Video versions are available on YouTube and Rumble. Southeast Indiana residents can also find my books at the Walnut Street Variety Shop at 111 George Street in Batesville, Indiana. You can also order these books direct from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign the book, just send an email to mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com at mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed book and instruction on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners to this podcast that want email notifications of my new releases can just send an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you will find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you for listening.